This video is intended for educational purposes only. It doesn't glorify or promote the use of any legal or illegal substances. The content provided is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. The views expressed in this video are based on the latest research available at the time of filming and are subject to change as new research emerges. The creator of this video strongly advises viewers to follow all applicable laws and regulations regarding the use of any substances mentioned in the video. The world of magic, unimaginable mystical experiences, horror of infinity, or euphoria of unity. These are some of the typical associations with the effects produced by magic mushrooms, commonly known as shrooms. Psilocybin mushrooms are famous for their psychedelic effects, and more recently they've been gaining attention for their potential therapeutic benefits. But are they really a promising therapy for mental health problems, or are they just a dangerous drug that can break your brain? Let's dive into that. So, for those of you who don't know, magic mushrooms are a group of fungi that contain psilocybin. When you ingest psilocybin, it converts into psilocin, which is the active component that takes your brain on a crazy psychedelic ride. Around 200 of different species of these cute, typically small mushrooms are found growing around the world, with Mexico probably being a leader. However, I wouldn't suggest hunting for this fungi yourself, unless you have a very experienced friend who can guide you, as these mushrooms can be easily confused with the poisonous type. So. What effects do shrooms produce in a person who decides to eat them? Commonly, approximately 20-40 minutes after ingesting psilocybin mushrooms, psilocin starts to act agonistically with serotonin receptors in your brain, and you start to feel kinda different. Depending on the dosage and your metabolism, you may start experiencing the full effect of the drug within one and a half, two hours. These effects might include enhancement of color and other unusual visual effects. You may perceive things as brighter or as if they have vibrant halos over them. And everything around you might start kind of breathing. Also, you might start experiencing attacks of uncontrollable giggling. <laughs> the music perception might change radically. You might hear it as you never heard before. The sound can be perceived as kind of 3D. Moreover, you can even perceive like you are able to see the sound visually. At higher dosages, you could start having full-blown complex hallucinations that do not go away even with your eyes open. It could be an infinite universe of constantly changing and flowing colorful fractals, or some fantastic scenes or scenarios. It could be whatever, really. Scenes of other worlds of robots or dinosaurs, perceptions of you communicating with extraterrestrial creatures, or even hallucinogenic perceptions of the process of your own birth or death. Some people might expect to deep dive in their trauma or memories the way they never experienced before. There will be also physical symptoms, which can include feeling your body as a heavier, much more relaxed or weak, difficulty to coordinate yourself, higher blood pressure, dilated pupils, and some people can experience nausea or vomits. Time and space perception can also be greatly altered. What in reality was two-minute experience can seem to you like two hours. All these effects have a high subjective component and also can greatly vary between individuals. In general, they last up to four, six hours and then fade away. Okay, so all of these effects sound quite crazy. And one might think that if a substance can produce such a strong alteration of the mind, then it's probably some really dangerous hard drug. But is it? To answer the question if shrooms can be labeled as dangerous drugs, we should start by trying to identify which properties making a drug dangerous or bad. A couple of important factors to consider in this regard are the drug's toxicity and abuse potential. Relative safety or toxicity of a drug can be estimated by its therapeutic index, which compares the amount of a drug that causes a therapeutic effect to the amount that causes toxicity. A higher therapeutic index is preferable to a lower one. And according to the existing literature, psilocybin has a relatively high therapeutic index of 641, which is more than three times higher than that of an aspirin and more than 30 times higher than the TI of nicotine. Another index used to evaluate toxicity of a substance is a median lethal dose, which in simple terms means how much of a drug would kill 50% of tested animals. For psilocybin, when administered orally to rats, 
that index is 280 milligrams per kilogram, which is approximately 50% more than that of caffeine. This way it is estimated that for a person to reach the median lethal dose value of a red, it would be required to eat around 17 kilograms of fresh mushrooms from a psilocybe cubensis species. So, as you can see, it is quite accepted among scientists that psilocybin mushrooms present quite low toxicity levels, with toxicity-associated effects resolving completely after 4-12 hours. Also, it's worth noting that the normalized ratings of the harm potential of magic mushrooms, as well as the percentage of users seeking emergency medical treatment after their consumption, are among the lowest compared to well-known drugs. And what about abuse potential? Well, currently available data suggests that the dependence potential of magic mushrooms is also very low. This is partly because psilocybin mushroom has have a specific quality of somehow protecting their user from developing abusing habits and addiction. Specifically, they cause quick and high tolerance, which lasts around two weeks. So, if a person wanted to take the shrooms every week or every day, they would just stop having desirable effects. Another aspect to consider in regards to their low abuse potential is an intense nature of the psychedelic effects. For many people, it can be quite overwhelming and very memorable, like an adventurous travel. And mostly people don't seek to travel every week or every day. Instead, they prefer maintaining it as a special occasional experience. And what about the possible risks of taking shrooms? Well, as any drug, they are not exempt of a possibility of side effects, which are really important to consider. Most of the possible side effects are short-term and go away when the drug effects wear off. They may include feeling nauseous and even vomiting, increased heart rate, increased blood pressure, sweating or chills, impaired coordination and balance, among others. As to psychological risks, they are mostly associated with so-called bad trips. This is when instead of having pleasant hallucinogenic and bodily experiences, a person may develop fear, anxiety, panic, scary visuals and paranoia. And due to distorted perception of time, people may start to believe that these feelings will never go away and that they will be locked up forever in their personal hell. That's why researchers say that if you ever decide to consume shrooms, it is essential to have a safe environment, do it only when you have a positive mindset and have a trusted sober person around, who can help you and calm you down in a case of a bad trip. All of this can minimize the chances of a negative experience. Also, speaking about possible risks, we can't avoid mentioning hallucinogenic persistent perception disorder. This condition typically consists of some form of perceptual flashbacks, mostly visuals, from a psilocybin experience or other psychedelic drugs. These effects could last for weeks or even months. This side effect is rare, but it could happen. And special caution should be taken by people with underlying mental health problems, such as, for example, schizophrenia, as the shrooms can cause a psychotic break or worsen a person's condition. People with known mental illnesses should avoid taking psilocybin mushrooms outside of a clinical setting. Speaking of a clinical setting, after three decades of demonizing psychedelics in media, they have finally made their way back into medical research centers in the early 2000s. The last decade was especially fruitful for studies investigating the possible therapeutic benefits of psilocybin. Existing meta-analytic articles suggest that psilocybin therapy can effectively combat anxiety and depressive disorders, with some studies even suggesting its potential usefulness for treatment-resistant depression. Additionally, this drug showing promising results in treated obsessive-compulsive disorder and addictions, as well as improving mood and reducing anxiety and fear of death in terminally ill patients. Curiously, many of these studies have shown that the improvements were especially significant in people who had deeper mystical experiences. The intensity of these experiences can be very high. For example, more than half of the participants in a John Hopkins study reported that taking psilocybin was among the most meaningful experiences in their lives. All of this might sound really positive and amazing, and it truly is amazing. However, it is important to remember that all of these clinical trials and studies offered safe controlled settings and trained professional support during the treatments, which significantly reduced all the risks associated with psilocybin consumption. This means that trying to treat your depression or other condition with magic mushrooms without professional supervision 
might not be the best idea. If you are interested in my personal experience of taking psychedelic mushrooms for the first time, you can check it out on my Patreon page. To all my amazing viewers, thanks for watching and take care.